your host, Kimberly Cloud. Um, I have a very special guest here to the show today. Can you go ahead and announce to the world who you are and where you're calling from? Can you go ahead and announce to the world who you are and where you're calling from? We're online. Yeah. 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 <laughs> where I'm calling from. Yeah. We well, my name is my name is uh, Kevin Stone. I'm known as the Hollywood hypnotist. I'm based out of Los Angeles, California. Give him a warm welcome. Like he's done done a lot of stuff for almost four decades. Can we go ahead and talk about your past leading up into your present? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you want to know? Anything like how you got started in hypnotism or hip being a hypnotist. Just anything. I'm just Absolutely. wanting to probe your mind. <laughs> or is it that I'm probing your mind? How does that work? Right? Well, here's the thing. You know, I came to California over 30 years ago, and my goal was to be a news anchor. And that's what I was following at the time. I, I had graduated college, and I came west. I'm from New England. Okay. And I came west to start my career. And back in those days, you had to start radio. Radio was the, the stepping stone to the next, to the next. Nowadays, it's completely different. Um, but anyway, that's how it all happened. But I was in between jobs at the time. Yes. And so there was this college over in the valley of Los Angeles. And, and they offered college credit. So I thought, well, I'm in between jobs. And every time I'm in between anything, I always go back to academia because I have a learning mind and I always uh, uh, like to learn different things. And I've always had an interest since I was a boy on how hypnotism works because a lot of people only see what they see in the movies, TV, or what they've heard on the radio. And it's not like that at all, or a comedy stage hypnosis show. And I thought, wow, this is fascinating. And this is an actual college that teaches how to do this for the medical field. Interesting. So I, and I was going to get college credit for it. So I thought, wow, I'm going to go check it out. Was I serious about it? Not really. I just wanted to get the college credit and I had a general interest since I was a boy just to understand how it worked and why it worked. And maybe if I can use it for myself, then I'm benefiting and I'm in a win situation. So I basically signed up for the program and the rest is basically history uh, because I didn't know I'd become who I became who I am today. <laughs> and you know who I am. And if people look me up, I mean, even if you Google uh, me, best hypnotist in the world, you're going to find my name. And I earned that because of my techniques, my modalities, who I've become and why I've become. And so that's basically the short and long of it, of how basically it started for me. It was just something that I thought I had a general interest in. I was going to get college credit for it. And of course, now I take it very seriously and I'm very passionate about helping people and educating people about a natural modality, a natural organic modality called hypnosis that you can utilize in your life to change your life to make your life better. And tell me, you've worked around psychologists. Tell me about that. Like, yep. what are y'all trying to get together? And then the second question, I'm going to put them together, mold them together. Tell okay. me about what's in your CD that you have and you produced. My downloads? Yeah. So, so my techniques and my modality of hypnosis um, is very different than most. And, and why? Uh, because of my technique, uh, because I've become so passionate about the power of the mind, how the mind works. And if there's this tool that we're not taught in our society called hypnosis, what is this really about? And how does it really work? And are we doing it all day long? Yes, we're doing what is called self-hypnosis all day long. We go in and out of hypnosis about a thousand times a day. That's our natural state it is. So why not harness that power? See, we're not taught on how to do that in our educational systems. Um, just, just in general, I think in to be transparent, honestly, within the last maybe 15, maybe that's too much, 10 years, 
it's become more mainstream where people are starting to understand the applications of this natural organic state and how they can use it in their lives in a healthy organic way instead of being heavily medicated or going through all of these other techniques that work sometimes work that kind of thing so that's what, what what really allowed me to become passionate. So the 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 downloads or the CDs that I offer on my site, mm -hmm. those programming systems are a, a way to listen in the comfort of your own home, and they're affordable. Uh, they're because if you were to see me in person, I'm a little more expensive than the downloads. So a lot of people said, "Well, hey, can you do something for us?" where it's a little more affordable and we can do this out of the comfort of our own home. And I said, sure. So I designed all of the program systems on the website for that reason. So it's basically it would be the same thing if you were to see me in my office. It, it's the same thing on, on the programming system where you listen and you learn and then you become what you need to become and remove the blocks with the powers of hypnosis. So it's basically like a talking session in different uh, modules and stuff. Some of them are. Yeah. Is Again, it it's, it's what? Is it music like two, like Steve Jones type thing? Yeah, no, no, no music on mine. No, I don't I don't do any music because I think that confuses the conscious and the subconscious mind. Mine is direct uh, learning lessons on how you can apply the modality to where it fits for you because a lot of people say well I, I can't be hypnotized or i've never been hypnotized before well that's not it's true we're all hypnotized all day long so some com common forms of hypnosis well uh, if you can driving along on your freeway or your highway and then you realize you missed your exit it was three exits back somewhere right that's yeah. a common form of hypnosis. yeah there you go that's a common form of hypnosis. Other common forms of childbirth, yoga, karate, watching a good movie, reading a good book, right? Do you remember the movie? Only because this one stands out most for me because I had many conversations with the director. But do you remember the, the, the movie Titanic? Yes, I love okay. that movie. So if you remember going into that movie and then watching others come out of that movie, how they were so emotionally absorbed with the moments of that movie. They were coming out in tears. They were coming out motivated to find out more about the Titanic. All of these things were and, 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 and like, this is a movie based on actual occurrences of the Titanic. But you were so moved by the movie that you forget about your day. You forget about what your stresses, your anxieties. You completely absorbed yourself into that movie and you were affected by it. That's hypnosis, you see. And so if you can understand how that works in your life and why you have issues in your life that are blocking you from achieving your maximum potential in life, why not learn tools and techniques to remove that? See, the most important thing to remember is this. All behavior, all behavior is learned behavior. So the good news is you can unlearn the negative behavior that's prohibiting you from achieving your maximum potential. Hypnosis is that higher source. Hypnosis is a natural, organic resource that you can plug into and utilize in your life to make the changes. Well said. How have you improved quality of lives within Hollywood and beyond in the clients that you have had? Yeah, same thing. I mean, it's really educating and informing people of this is something you do all day long. We all do it all day long. So why not try to understand it as your own power, your own personal power, plugging into that power to make the changes and take that little voice inside your head. You know, that little voice, the voice that for all of you watching right now or listening right now, that when you woke up this morning, that that little voice said to you, oh, I'm having a bad hair day or I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to get out of bed. You know, I just want to stay in bed today. That little voice that, some, again, to, that we listen to that actually programs us 
to not allow us to do what we really want to do and what we need to do in our lives, to, to, to live life to the fullest, to experience everything that we imaginably can. Absolutely. So tell me that that voice that we hear, because everybody hears this voice, like you said, you know, you're in bed. Like this morning, I had a podcast to do and I accidentally missed it because I went to sleep at 11 o'clock last night. And I was like saying to myself, I was like, oh, my God, I, I'm late. So I immediately text him and change the appointment. But you're right. We hear that little voice that tells us that. Tell me, do you do you study that little voice, you know, that's in all of our heads? Do you study that form of uh, hypnosis therapy? Can you tell me a little bit, go a little bit more in depth with it? What, I, what I'm interested in, in, in all hypnotists, all hypnotherapists, I should say, hip, there's, there's a difference. There's, there's, there's two sides to hypnosis that people are very familiar with. Uh, more so, they're, they're familiar with the entertainment side of hypnosis, the comedy stage hypnotists. They understand they've seen a show uh, in their high school or they've seen a show at the fair. Um, and so they, they're familiar with that type of hypnosis. But this, the, the medical side, which is the, the hypnotherapy side, that's the very, very powerful side. So what, what I'm interested in is the subconscious mind. So if you can think about for a second, visualize and imagine and think about a circle. Now, you make the circle as big as you want or as small as you want. It doesn't matter. It's your circle. That circle is going to represent your brain. Now, that circle, that brain, is broken up into three sections. The top part, which is your conscious mind, that's 12% of your brain's capacity. Oh. We're going to draw a line through the circle. Yes. Okay? That's going to represent your critical factor. We'll get back to that in a moment. Okay. The bottom part of the, the, the brain, the circle, is your subconscious mind. 88% of your brain's capacity. You might have heard general terms of 90, 10, but the real numbers are 12 and 88. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the subconscious mind because that is where all information, and we've traced, and the scientists have traced this all the way back into birth, mm -hmm. where all information is stored into that part of your brain. It's the subconscious mind. So it's this massive filing cabinet that stores all the information inside of your mind. The mind does not think for itself. Remember what I told you earlier, all behaviors learn behavior. So the mind doesn't think for itself. It's programmed just like a computer, just like what we're on right now to have this conversation. You're, you're somewhere else and I'm somewhere, I'm in California, right? We have to program the computer to tell it what to do. Same thing with our mind. So the subconscious, that 88% is really the dominant part of the brain that controls our mind-body system. We think it's that little voice inside or the conscious mind, that 12%. In reality, we only really use about 3% of our brain's capacity. We haven't even tapped in to the full potential of the power of the mind yet. And hopefully it'll be done in, in our lifetime, but I don't think so because it's so vast. It's so, uh, it's so in depth that it's so much information going up. But to keep it simple, getting back to the subconscious mind, that's where all of the information is stored. So it doesn't matter to the brain, just like a computer. It doesn't matter if you have good information in there or bad information, positive or negative. Doesn't matter to the computer. Doesn't matter to the mind. It's in there. But what ends up happening as we get older, we start to realize that some of the negative information isn't working for us. Let's say like we are dealing with weight issues, smoking issues, addiction, or we have fear, phobia. We simply can't get on a, a, a plane because we had some sort of experience that our mind that was programmed by. So therefore we have this fear or phobia of not wanting to fly. So we have issues in our life as we get older and we start to understand logically, reasonably, and rationally that these things are prohibiting us from living our full lives, or living our maximum potential of what we can out of life. So then we go, well, I don't know where to turn to fix this. I don't know what to do. So what do we start doing? We go to a doctor, we get on medication, we start drinking. People do all kinds of different things or self-medicate and they realize that doesn't work for them either because now that becomes an addiction because that's what the brain understands. 
So that part is what is the most powerful part, the subconscious mind, because the information is sitting in there. So the scientists came up with a number, and that magic number is 21. Anytime we establish anything 21 times in a row, it now becomes an automatic in our mind-body system. The mind automatically thinks that's the correct thing to do. Just like when we go in the computer, we our computer gets full, right? You know that little trash can that's up in the left corner or the right corner of your computer? <laughs> so our computer can work faster. We have to empty out information that's sitting in there, files that are taking up space and dump it out. It's the same process to keep it simple with the subconscious mind. There's information in there that we don't want to be in there and it needs to be reprogrammed. Well, hypnosis is that or natural organic tool to reprogram that mind, to reprogram your thinking, to release the negative behavior, to replace with the positive behavior. And again, mind, the mind does not think for itself. It is programmed. Well said, you taught me so much. So Let's reprogram my mind right now because I Absolutely. have a bachelor's in psychology and yes. I learned from Sigmund Freud. Y'all didn't change the way the the because because what I learned from Sigmund Freud was the unconscious, the subconscious and the conscious. And then you speak, you know, and I did not know that in the subconscious mind is 88 percent capacity and in the conscious mind is three percent capacity. That is awesome, man. Like, oh my God, you talk. Well, you know, Freud, Freud was a practicing hypnotist. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, he was. Sigmund wow. Freud was a practicing hypnotist. Absolutely. And so, yeah, there's lots of history with, with him and James Braid. And we can go back to all of that time of uh, how he was experimenting, not only with hypnosis, but with cocaine, and we can go on and on. So if you've studied Freud, you know what I'm talking about. And so you get a better picture of where Freud was kind of going. And then at some point he denounced hypnotism. Uh, but then by the time uh, his life, by the time he, he ended his, when his life ended, he was now back to being an advocate of the applications of the powers of what hypnotism could do in people's lives. Yeah. Okay, and we're gonna um, like come back to that. And I wanted to hear about your shows that you've been on, Teen Mom, OG, and the Tyra Banks show. <laughs> Tell me about that. <laughs> wow, that's going back a little couple of years now. Uh, no, maybe not. Um, well, I don't know. I, I can't remember. You know, because I just uh, I just completed a couple of. Uh, of major TV shows within this past week and some uh, major interviews, just like this one um, on radio, some big, big uh, international radio stations and stuff. I, I probably do uh, five, six interviews a week. Um, so let's go back to, uh, was it Teen Mom and, and uh, Tyra? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, they contacted me uh, two different, two different uh, types of, um, hypnosis. Tyra was more about New Year's resolutions, I think, at the time. I think all this is up on, on the YouTube channel. So go check check out my YouTube. I think I have that up there. If it's still allowed, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, hers was about New Year's resolutions. I think we help people to lose weight and stop smoking on that particular program because she was all about, um, again, understanding the power of the mind and how that worked. And so for that particular show is more of the medical side. For Teen Mom, mm -hmm. Um, it originally started out with entertainment where we were going in to help out the teen moms with their stress and anxiety. And, and as you know, if you've watched those shows, um, those shows were more about the drama and the re reality of TV. And so they were wanting to do more of the entertainment side besides more of the medical side. But by the end of it, because they saw the results within the teen moms and the, and the husbands or the boyfriends. Mm -hmm. um, we did a whole show. The whole end of the season was, uh, I think, an hour program on MTV showing the medical side and the applications of 
what the results were and how to help them. I think that's up on YouTube as well. So yeah, that's what those two programs were, were about. But you can see the, the vast differences between the two where one was really wanting to understand and talk about the medical side. One was more of the entertainment that turned into the seriousness of it. And that's why I bring it up. That's the point because most people's introduction, including myself, by the way, was the entertainment side. Uh -huh. I had seen a comedy stage hypnotist at a comedy club. From I, I grew up in the East Coast, New England, and that was my first experience. And I thought, wow, this is interesting. But I never understood how it could help or medically help people with pain management, losing weight, stopping smoking, stress, whatever it is you want to change. I didn't understand all that. I just understood it from a from an entertaining side. And of course, if you watch it on TV or you listen to it, or even, even behind me, those posters are, are original posters from that time. One is a, a movie poster, uh, actually two of them are movie posters, and one of them is actually from the 1800s, this one right here. He was called The Great Gesture, and he was a comedy stage hypnosis show where, again, this was people's introduction to what they believed hypnotism was or what it could do to help them. They, didn't never, they never understood how it could actually help them in their lives. So, yeah. Tell me about, um, like, I'm interested in the Celebrity Fit Club because I watched your... Uh, I saw that. <laughs> tell I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about Celebrity Fit Club, but go ahead. Um, tell me tell me the story. I would love to know. Okay, so if you watch that one too, and I think that one's up on, on, on YouTube as well. There's so many, uh, and I'm not sure what's up or what's not up. But um, Celebrity Fit Club had called. And that, if you're not familiar with the show, it used to be a very popular show. Um, yeah, I would, this was I would, on network television. That wasn't even like a cable show. That was on regular like yeah. you know, NBC, ABC, something like that. Uh -huh. And back in the day, it, there, there was a difference. Now everything is so blended. I mean, even YouTube shows are bigger than some of the, the TV shows, right? But anyway, I digress. So Celebrity Fit Club calls and they tell me, hey, we want you to come in and we have a bunch of celebrities and we want you to hypnotize them. And they're going to give you all the things they want to be hypnotized for. And I go, fine, no, whatever, whatever, let's do it. So we, we go up to this. They had rented this house, this amazing house over in the Malibu overlooking the ocean it was beautiful and they had this whole thing set up if you when you look at the video there's a room and they're all sitting in, in like a horseshoe with recliners and um i think it was uh 10 of them maybe 10 celebrities uh, i know that two of them are no longer with us anymore which is so interesting to watch when you when you watch these things and you look back and you go wow they're no longer with us so anyway um, so they, they call me and they, they ask me to go in and, and we're going to do this whole hypnosis thing for the show. It was all about hypnosis for the show. So we hypnotize all the celebrities and we get them in. What, what, what did happen that day, which they didn't show, which was hilarious. And I tell this story to this day because it, it's, it was, uh, it's, uh, very interesting to know, especially for hypnotists, if they're doing these type of programs. <laughs> so they call me in and it was Generally, sometimes on sets, because they're running behind schedule, the timing is off, so you're kind of rushed. So I went in, and I went right into starting doing hypnosis, because that's what they wanted to do. The director goes, just like like when you said, hey, we're live now, boom, but we're live. There is no editing. This is what we're doing, and that's what they did. They, sh they did not edit their thing. They shot right what it was. So the story was I went – so back in those days, it was this was a six camera shoot when mm. a lot of cameras were hidden. And back in those days, they were not like they are today, but the cameras were big and multi million dollar cameras where, where the camera operators held them on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. And the lenses were worth, I don't know, several thousand of dollars. It's very expensive equipment. So we had a couple of guys behind the curtains. When you watch the video, there's red curtains. So they're behind the curtains. And there's a couple of guys in the ceiling. There's two other guys behind us. So I think there's like six total in the room. Well, what I didn't do, which I do now, before I start the hypnosis, and I learned it from this particular show, where I have to prep everyone before I start the hypnosis to 
to give them suggestions to not to go into hypnosis. Why? Because I'm going to tell you in a second. So I start the thing because they're like, let's go, go, we're live, go. So I start the hypnosis. So one of the camera guys behind the curtain with a multi-million dollar camera on his shoulder goes into hypnosis. This guy oh. falls from the curtain right to the floor. Whoa. <laughs> Smashes the entire camera on the floor. So you can imagine the entire set, I think there's like a hundred people on set that day. The set goes silent. Everyone's looking at me and I'm going, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the guy was going to go in hypnosis and fall through the curtain and damn it and ruin a million dollar camera. Yeah. Needless to say, they figured it out pretty quickly. Everything was fine. You know, I took him out of hypnosis and we, we, we they got him another camera and we resumed shooting. But that was a very humorous story to this day because, you know, with the lesson learned uh, for the hypnotist, which were me, was me that day, is to make sure that you dehypnotize anyone who is not going to go into the hypnosis. So that way, they, they, if they're working for the whatever it is they're doing, then they can continue to do their job and there's no interruptions. With all of that said, several, uh, maybe two years ago, three years ago, a, a another shoot came up where I did do that. Uh, it was a famous, uh, it's a famous YouTuber. He's still out there. He's got like, I don't know, 10 million subscribers or whatever. So he calls me and he wants to do some things with his friends on his YouTube channel. And I go, fine, come on, let's go. We'll do it. So I did, I did do the lesson of what we were what was just told. However, some other camera guy came in late after the, the initial meeting before we started shooting. Mm -hmm. So that's up on my site as well, where you can actually see the story I'm talking about with another camera operator who actually <laughs> didn't get the memo and wasn't there for the meeting. And I didn't know because I'm focused on what's happening. So he, you can see him going in. It's 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 kind of humorous. Nobody nobody ever nobody got hurt, but it's it's humorous to watch because they actually go into hypnosis while they're shooting. And it's go go check it out. It's up on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I think that Coolio was in there. Coolio was in Celebrity Boot Camp, right? I think he was. I think he like I said, it was like ten yeah. or twelve of them. There was like yeah. a dozen of them. Yeah, yep. There's a lot of them. Oh wow. So um, let me see. Uh, I wanted to know, like, take me on a journey before I say anything else. Take me on a journey where you hypnotize somebody. And, like, how does it go? How, how do you do it? I'm not trying to get hypnotized because I know that's real. What do you mean? Well, Who, it says it, I haven't it, already done it. True. Kimberly, Kimberly true. Do, you, do you feel, do you, do you feel hypnotized right now? Actually, you want to try something? What? Everybody can do this too who's watching. So I'm not going to take you into hypnosis, but I can convert you from this to go into hypnosis. Okay. But let me ask you this. Yes. What do you mean you don't want to get hypnotized? You've never been hypnotized before? Uh, you know what? I listen to Steve Jones and he. Uh, I go to sleep listening to him. I. I yeah, yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But you've never you've never taken it further. You've only just listened for sleep. Never changed anything with hypnosis. Um, it, it's improved my memory and oh. it's improved a lot of good things. And I Excellent. plan to buy your CD too because I want to reboot my mind fully. I want to get the full capacity of our brain. Or awesome. however, awesome. awesome. All right, let's try something right now. Okay. I'm not going to hypnotize anyone. I want to show you how the mind works and the power of the mind. Fair enough? Fair enough. Okay, so Kimberly, take your hands, put them up like this. Take them like this. Fold down your hands like you're getting ready to pray. Take your two pointy fingers, put them up like this. Now, if you're watching or listening, you can do this as well. If you're driving, don't, don't do this. Don't just keep your hands on the wheel and make sure <laughs> if you're operating a heavy machinery, do this later, okay? But anyway, everyone watching, everyone listening, your fingers are about an inch apart right now. 
Now, don't look at me or the screen. I want you to look directly down the center of your two fingers. Do that now, Kimberly. And just focus and concentrate on my voice. And you'll find that starting right now, those two fingers will start to move in closer and closer together. As if there was two magnets on each finger, it'll continue to move in, pulling and tugging, tugging and pulling, closer, closer, closer. They're going to touch. When they do touch, you reach ahead of your suggestibility. Pulling, tugging, tugging, pulling, closer, 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 closer. Touching, 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 touching. Excellent. <laughs> How do you feel, Kimberly? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my gosh, I was not trying to do that. I, I kept know. trying to fight it. Oh my God, well done. And no, that, wasn't, that wasn't me. Again, look, as a hypnotist, I have no powers. I have no capabilities like you see in TV and in the movies. Because if I did, Kimberly, I wouldn't be having this discussion with you right now. I would have went to the bank earlier, hypnotize all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Put in the car, go away. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, thank you. You did that. You did that, and everyone who who was watching and allowed themselves to go through the experience did that. That is the power of suggestibility. That is the power of hypnosis. And so you allowed yourself to do that with my instruction and my guidance, and therefore it happened. What you believe is what you become. What you think is what you are. And that is why it is so important to continuously program your mind, that subconscious mind, with positive feed, positive information. So therefore, you're able to do exactly what you want to do without any blocks, without any fear, without any reservation, without that little voice inside your head telling you I had a bad, I'm having a bad hair day today or I don't feel so good today. That's stuff you need to eliminate, get rid of it, take it out of your mind and replace with this positive information into your subconscious mind. So your computer system, just like the computer system that everyone works on every single day, knows exactly what it needs to do and doesn't do what it thinks it needs to do because that's what the mind does. Because remember, all behavior is what? Learn, Learn behavior. You can change it. Hypnosis is that tool. How do you think that we can try to tap into our uh, subconscious to reach 4% maybe capacity of our brain? Do you think that there's any instruments or anything they're working on for that? I don't know if they are or not. I think that the technology is medically and even uh, just technology in general is more focused on AI, I think that technology is really focused on this the 7-Eleven mentality. Uh, what I mean by that is everyone wants it and they want it now and they want it quick. And that's the thing with hypnosis as well. People, when they call my, or contact my office all of the time, they, they think that if they get hypnotized, magic is going to happen. Oh, I, 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 I was a smoker and then I'm not going to be a smoker after I get hypnotized. Well, that's a yes and no answer. Great. Depends on the individual. But yes. hypnosis is not magic. Hypnosis, I don't get any voodoo dust sprinkling on you and you walk away cured. It is a process. It is a process like going to the gym, right? Here's the thing that I tell everyone. Every year around January, everyone makes those New Year's resolutions. And what is the number one New Year's resolution that people make? Do you know, Kimberly? They want to lose weight. That's right. And they want to be healthier. So what do they do? They go to the gym and they sign up for a gym membership. Yep. And cancel and you, know it. <laughs> you know what happens by February? The end of February? First week of March? What happens? They cancel it. They cancel it or don't do it. Why don't they do it? Because it takes work. And they start to feel their body transforming and the pain that comes with it is a good pain, right? That, and it's a process. You don't just get to sign up for the membership, walk into the gym, chit chat with the people there or your friends, and then walk out and do nothing. You have to put the work in. It's like everything else in life. There's no shortcuts, Kimberly. You have to put the work in. And with programming the mind, 
And it depends on the individual. Now, I work with all the way down to five years of age. You can hypnotize children five years of age. I've even experimented with under that, but that's another story for another day. But let's just say we're going to start at five years of age. You can start hypnotizing to help improve their lives. Okay. Now, when you get to a certain age, you start to realize, well, these are the changes I want to make. You have to put the work in and it takes conditioning. It takes a process. Now, hypnosis can work with certain things to one session and it's over, right? I don't want to confuse anyone by what I just said, and I don't want to contradict what I just said, but I've had smokers 40 years, two and a half packs a day, Camel Down Filters, worst cigarette you can smoke, stop in one session. Yeah. One time, it's over and done with. So it really depends on the individual. It really depends on the person. There's so many variables that come with the actually hypnotherapy or the therapy part of it that it depends on the person. So it doesn't work with one session with everyone every time. It takes a series of sessions. It could take up to 12 sessions. It could take up to six sessions. It really depends. And again, they have to have an assessment like anything else. So you have to assess them and they have to get hypnotized for the first time. And quite frankly, hypnosis is not for everyone. Yeah. It's a natural organic state and we go in and out of it all the time, a thousand times a day. But it's not for everyone because everyone thinks of the negative of it. So they don't allow it to work for themselves. Look, I was one of those people. I come from New England. Okay. I come from the East Coast. And I grew up in an environment where this was taboo. You mentioned the word hypnosis and you were banned from the Catholic Church. Uh, that's a little extreme, but you, you get the point of what I'm saying. And a lot of people understand that, especially from the East Coast, that again, all of these stigmas were attached to what hypnosis was. Those stigmas are still alive today. It's going to take more time. Like I said, within the last 10, 15 years, it's become more mainstream of people understanding the powers of it. The medical field has embraced it for the applications of what it can do and help people in a natural organic way. But I think it's going to take more time for people to really understand. That's why I do programs like this to really educate people, to have them understand what hypnosis really is. And it's not the operators, not me as the hypnotist, whereas you can see, it, especially in these posters behind me, that, oh, the hypnotist has this power. He has all these things. I, I'm guiding you like any other doctor into a process and a journey to reprogram the most powerful part of your brain to do what it is that you want it to do instead of it doing what it thinks it needs to do. Because that's how it was programmed by the environment, the society, our family, and we become suggestible to all of that inner circle. And that's why you're doing what you do today. Well said. And environment plays a factor. Like after you hypnotize somebody and they like, well, I'm not going to smoke, go back to their husbands or wives and they're smoking a cigarette. They go right back into that same pattern. That's Is right. That Absolutely. So you, you, you're 100% spot on. Because we, we become suggestible to our environments. And so we have to recognize that, that this isn't working for us. This isn't a healthy environment for where we need to be. So we need to make those changes. And sometimes it's very, very difficult for people. But you have to, uh, first step to any recovery is what, Kimberly? You said you study psychology. What's the first step to any recovery program? Any, any, anyone. Um, the first step would be, you know, accepting. There you go. That's it. Okay. Acceptance. <laughs> Number one, you have to. I, know, I didn't want to put you. I didn't want to put you on the spot. But when people say, just like when they when people tell me, "Hey, I'm a Christian," I go, "Oh, really? Oh, okay. Let's uh, let's ask you a couple of questions. See where you're really at here, right? You told me you were you study psychology. So yes, everyone everyone who studies basic psychology one on one, acceptance is the number one. First step to any recovery program, I care what it is, you have to accept and understand. So therefore, same thing with hypnosis. You have to understand where you're at. It's a very tough step. It's the first step, but very difficult because, again, you have to look in that mirror and you really have to say to yourself, this is what's really going on around me. And I need to make those changes and I need to find a way to do it. 
And as a human, we have such tremendous resilience. So we can. We just need the right tools to do that. That's where hypnosis comes in. It's an amazing free tool that we use all the time that we're not educated on how to use it. But once we understand how to use it, you're going to make those phenomenal changes in your life, just like I did. You see, I'm not, I just don't promote and talk about this. And my passion is so great about it because I'm that person. I was that person. I'm still that person. I'm a human being. Life is an evolution. It's continuously changing. There's challenges every single day. You need tools to block out the negatives and keep your environment positive. And so there's a lot of issues in my life as a younger man. Matter of fact, when I, when I, when I started studying hypnosis in a bona fide, qualified college, I was still skeptic. And until I started to apply it to myself, why was I skeptic? Because that's how I was brought up. That was my mindset that this stuff was just taboo. It was the work of the, of, of the demons and all this nonsense. And, and that was, was my belief system at the time. And still, I really allowed it to start working for myself. You know, the first thing I did with, with, with hypnosis for me personally, what? stop biting my nails. Oh, wow. Really? That's a nervous, Honestly, thing, right? That was stressed. It was, uh, there's a lot, there's oral fixation. There's a sibling rivalry. There's a lot of um, subconscious things that are attached to that type of behavior. So some of the things I've said come with that. So I was biting my nails as a, as a young man at this point and embarrassed by it, but it tear, tear them off the whole thing. And so I said, the first thing I'm going to do was the most difficult thing for me at that time, which was biting my nails. So I, we used to have practice sessions on Saturday afternoons uh, mm -hmm. with class. We used to all get together and practice for hours, hypnotizing each other. Because, it's again, it's not something you just do. You have to understand the language. You have to understand the behavior. There's a lot of things that come with being a hypnotist. So the first thing I had them do was give me suggestions or hypnotize me to stop biting my nails. And so it worked. And I was like, I, I, my mind just went, because I, I was I was in the other side. I, like a lot of people watching this program right now, I know where you were at because I was that guy and more because of my upbringing. I come from New England. If you understand anything about that environment or where that's from, it's a whole different world. Okay. So that was the first thing for me. Stop biting my nails. And, that, and I, I just took it from there. And I just changed a lot of different things in my life. I was, and believe it or not, and I know it's hard for people because when I tell them this and when, after they watch this, they're going to say the same thing because I know what you're thinking. I'm an introvert. Me too. Me too. And so I couldn't even have this conversation with, with you because I was that introverted. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in front of 10,000, 20,000 people giving lectures, doing comedy stage hypnosis shows, doing all of those things. But my core is still introvert. But I've learned and I've programmed my mind to be able to do what I do and feel comfortable with that. You see, sometimes with behaviors, the negative behaviors, all we, all we can do is not necessarily eliminate them to manage, contain, and control them. And once you understand and have those tools to do that daily, you're able to achieve your maximum potential in life to get the most of what you can out of life while you have it. So why not? Why not understand this natural organic tool that you're doing all the time anyway, harness that power within yourself and change your life? Wow. <laughs> you know, I had a quick question. Um, okay. You seen the Maturian candidate? Is of course. That Both versions. Which yeah. one are you talking about? Denzel or the old school one where she suggested things. It was very scary, but true. You know, you put suggestions in somebody's head while they're asleep <laughs> or half sleep or it, he right. wasn't asleep. But tell me right. what's your right. point of view about that? Okay, 100%. So they, they, they brought that movie out. This is the original. They, they, they brought another one out with Denzel uh, yeah, years later. 
which was also very, very good. But the, of course, the originals are always the best. Okay, the originals with Frank, Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. and they basically were covering things from the war and how that system worked. Okay, and this is what I tell people as well in my lectures, uh, or if they ask. What, what is that really all about? What, are they doing hypnosis? Yes, they're doing hypnosis. Just like Jim Jones, David Koresh, you know, all these people that were not good people utilizing the power of suggestibility, quote, hypnosis. OK, mm -hmm. so with the Manchurian candidate, those techniques that they were utilizing is what were utilized in Vietnam. This is what happens when you brainwash people the sleep deprivation, or they induce you with a hallucinogenic drug that allows the mind to not really think normally. So that's how it's induced in that way. Now, that's a really um, forceful way of doing it. But everything in that movie was pretty much spot on. It wasn't sensationalized. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't dra dramatized. What they were saying it was from actual files from that time period they utilized that and they turned it into a movie. There's some drama. Of course, it's a movie. But but the main information in there is accurate. Well, and fair. the same thing with the Denzel Washington. They came out later. It was more dramatized, more movie fluff. But it was still, if you really understood the basic principle of the Manchurian candidate and what they were trying to apply back in those days, mind power, mind techniques, psychics. Uh, the Russians were very heavily involved with all of those things back in the day of how the mind works and how they can utilize the mind to uh, use it in war situations. So, but the later movie, same thing. It was more movie-esque, but the information was still there. But the original, absolutely wonderful movie. I, I suggest everyone take a look at that. Since you're you're a doctor, Owen, uh, I wanted to know, do you think that the drugs that are being used today, the illegal drugs, are like hallucinogens such as methamphetamine? Do you know anything about that? Have y'all studied that drug? Because I'm trying to get it off the streets when I become city council. And I applaud you. I applaud you 100 percent because you're absolutely correct. And I think that the youth of today or the younger generation of our society are not really understanding the applications of what they're doing. They're, they're so consumed with social media, you know, all of these things and, and wanting to be what they think they see. That's not the way to go about it. And I think that eventually, again, because again, God has, has amazing powers and mysterious ways of how he, he works. And you have to have faith in that. And I do. And that, and that, by the way, with that said, is the higher highest power. Hypnosis is a very powerful tool, but if you really want to plug into the highest power, get in touch with your faith. Understand God. So I'm going to get that soapbox real quick, but I wanted to get that in there since we brought it up. But with the youth of today, I think God has his plan, and I think that's all going to work itself out and for what that purpose is. So there's the short answer. Understood. And if the um, people had, I'm a, if you had to give under two minutes, because we're we have five minutes left. If you had to give words of advice for people that want to be in your shoes for to be a, become a hypnotist, tell me what kind of advice would you give them? Oh, not even a hypnotist. Whatever it is you desire to be in life, whatever sure. God is calling you to do for your dreams and for what your calling is, discipline. Stay honest with yourself, transparent. Don't take everything so seriously and let God guide you to where you need to be because it's really not for you. It's really for him. And so if you understand those basic principles, you will succeed in life and know your role. Thank you so much. How can the people reach you? So easy to reach me. Um, the website is hypnotist.com. I'm going to spell that for you because even when I type it in, <laughs> it comes up. I, I put in the wrong thing sometimes. It's H Y P is in Paul N O T I S T.com. Hypnotist.com. You can reach me through there. 
Email me through that website. Also, the uh, the products we talked about earlier, the programming systems, Total Power Programming, everything is right there. Everything is on that website. If you want to learn more about hypnotism, I have a whole information page about that. There's a lot of great information. It's not just about me on that site. It's about learning a natural organic tool called hypnosis. Everything is on there. All you have to do is go there, click it, learn more, contact me. I do answer my own emails. Yes. Now, it may, may take me a couple of weeks to get back to you, but I, I, don't, have a, I don't have an assistant answer my emails. I, I do that personally because I think if someone's going to contact me personally, I should respond personally and not with an assistant. So I do answer my own. It may take me a little while to get back to you, but I will get back to you and answer your questions or whatever you have to help you, to educate you, to have you understand this natural organic resource so it can help you in your life. That's how passionate I am about this because I think that once I discovered it, it changed my entire life. And I've watched over the years now, millions of people become changed by the power and natural organic state of hypnosis. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining my show. Stay on the line so we can chit chat for a second. And y'all I'm going to, we have a minute. What do we have? Uh, we have like two minutes. We have two minutes. Okay. So, but by the way, was that all of the seventeen questions? I think you had seventeen questions. Nope. For I thought I thought off top of my head. I went with the flow. <laughs> it's just so entertaining. I had to. There's so it. much more. This is we haven't yes. scratched the surface. I agree. And I'm sure your questions are more in depth, and so next time we'll get into all of them, right? Yeah. And and I, and by the way, just for everyone looking or uh, watching and and listening. I didn't, I don't know the question. So this isn't set up. This is all natural organic. Just like you said, you went off, off the cuff. You went off with whatever direction we were going to go uh, of the information. So good for you, Kimberly. Thank but you. I want to let everyone know, everyone watching this program for one week, one solid week. And by the way, happy spring. First day of spring today. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the, on the program. I'm so honored to be here and humbled to be here. So this is what I'm going to do for everybody. For one solid week, everyone who watches this program, listens to this program, whatever platform this is on, for one week, which will be one week from now, today is the 19th of March, I'm going to give away, if you email me and put in the subject line, the Kimberly Cloud Show, is that the official name of the show? Yes. You put that in the subject line, and then in the letter of the email, you put in there, like the show, didn't like the show, Kevin, I didn't like your hat, uh, I loved Kimberly, you you, you were like weird, whatever it is you want to put in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you Whatever aren't. you put in that body, and you just say, hey, we looked at the show, I'm going to send you a total power programming system, self-hypnosis valued $150 for free. Every okay. single one who emails. Let me know what they thought about the show. I'm going to send it to you for free. It'll be a download. It'll be a self-hypnosis program so you can get started on your way to learn about hypnosis. Thank you so much. Y'all yeah, heard that. Give them a round of applause. He's been in the Hollywood industry for a while. Y'all take care. Be safe. Stay on the line, Kevin, and I'll see y'all later. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Hope to see you again.